Zelensky and and his government was basically within two hours of getting to Donetsk. My hotel is shelled by a by artillery by a I believe a 155 millimeter artillery shell. It's a NATO standard shell, either coming from a French or a British howitzer. Um, so. That is, I got immediately just a small taste of what it's like to live there. You know, just watched my hotel being hit about a hundred meters away from me. I just huge, just saw this huge firework kind of explode in front of me. And that was, you know, I was told out afterwards by some of the other people who survived, you know, were kind of relaxing afterwards, having a drink in this blown up hotel bar. And, uh, they said, well, that was your baptism by fire. You survived. Congratulations. Welcome to Donetsk. Overnight, the head of the U.S. Nuclear Command says that the big one is coming. That Those are his words. The big one is coming. Uh, actual nuclear attacks are coming. The Navy Admiral Charles Richard says, quote, the, this Ukraine crisis that we're in right now is just the warm-up act. And uh, he basically says, and he's the head of the U.S. Strategic Command, he says, the, the big one is coming, and it's going to be very long before we're going to get tested in ways that we haven't been tested in a long time. And it, and it isn't going to be very long before we're going to get tested in ways that we haven't been tested in a long time. So specifically, he's talking about this nuclear posture review, NPR, which changes our position effectively and allows the United States a first strike using nuclear weapons if all else fails. You have this strange announcement that we are suddenly sending, after eight months of no accountability, a few hundred soldiers under a brigadier general into Ukraine with the mission of somehow or another tracking all of the equipment that's being sent. Well, we already know that large quantities of the equipment are being sold off to others around the world, including ISIS. Uh, what is this really all about? I mean, it's been, we've been at this for eight months. We've spent $65 billion, and now suddenly we're worried about accountability. This is beginning to look a little like a, an advance party for this very dangerous uh, proposition that a multinational coalition of the willing, a force of perhaps 50, 60, 70, 80,000 Western troops, uh, will eventually go into Western Ukraine. We need, our leaders need to look out for our lives, our futures, our country, this planet, and negotiate an end to this war and prevent destruction of this planet. A nuclear There's also Holocaust. these very simplistic narratives that are going out now. Like, you have to support Ukraine, put a Ukraine flag in your Twitter bio, and I see so many people doing that, and then, Russia invaded Ukraine, so supporting Ukraine is important, so we should send money to Ukraine. And that's it. Yep. And I, and don't ask questions. Right. Don't ask how that money's being spent. Right. Don't question the corruption that everybody knows exists in Ukraine. Uh, don't question where those those weapons are going. Don't question, um, you know, what the actual real life ramifications are to our national security as a country. Uh, to our future, given nuclear war is on the line, what to speak of the direct economic implications we are already feeling with, you know, uh, gas prices hiking in many places in the country, uh, increased inflation, uh, you know, supply uh, shortages, food shortages, the the um, the UN, the UN's. Um, food guy, I can't remember his official title, but he's he's already sounded a warning saying that this war is causing an unprecedented threat of global starvation. Global starvation. So the ramifications of this, people are just like, ah, oh, okay, go to war and here's more guns and here's more weapons. And instead of actually being leaders and advocating for peace and a, and a, a negotiated resolution where yes, Ukraine's gonna have to give up something. Russia's gonna have to give up something. That's literally uh, what happens when you negotiate an end to a war. You can look throughout history. Nobody walks away completely happy, but that's what needs to happen for the sake of humanity at this point. And our leaders are, are failing to do so. And so it, it, we're at a point where the future is in our hands. And what are we, what are we willing to do? I'm gonna ask you a difficult question. What do you think is gonna happen? If we continue down this path that we have seen 
uh, where we have seen this war continue to escalate since the invasion happened, we will end up in World War III and a nuclear holocaust. Unfortunately, in our lifetimes, we may experience the same fate as the dinosaurs. But I'm not talking about another asteroid collision. I'm talking about a nuclear war. A nuclear war would have many of the same phenomena that the dinosaurs experienced. But this time, it absolutely would be our fault. Fortunately, there are things that we can do to prevent this from happening. If you live in a city that has a military base, there's a missile that's aimed at you right now. If you live in a city that has an important industry, a major university, a large airport, an oil refinery, or oil storage facilities, there is a hydrogen bomb that's aimed at you right now. We live in a perilous era. There are 15,000 nuclear weapons on the planet and the nine nuclear weapon states are in conflict with each other. The United States and North Korea, NATO and Russia, India and Pakistan. We're just one misunderstanding, one mistake, or one fanatic politician away from a nuclear conflict. 